Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story. A mom tried taking my friend. Alright, so I'm a regular high school student. I'm 17 years old, but this happened a few months ago. Anyway, story time. So it was a few months before the end of the school year. Back then, I was a junior and starting soon I'll be a senior. I was scared of college. Anyway, I get fairly decent grades, usually just a B, but a few A's, so my friend, which we will call Ki, decided she wanted to take me out to a restaurant. Nothing fancy, we're not exactly rich, but just something as a treat. We headed over to a local restaurant a few minutes away, an hour in walk-in, which is what we did, since neither of us could drive. The restaurant itself was nice. And the staff was kind and the waiter seemed to really like his job and enjoyed socializing with us. Probably because of Ki, since I have pretty much zero social skills. She's half Japanese, which will play a role soon. We placed our order and then soon enough received our drinks. We started talking for a bit, waiting, and then a devil decided to visit. The entitled kid walked up to us and said he recognized my friend. We created the band with our other friends, but were not really well known, usually performing in small places and I wouldn't say we're great, nowhere near ready for the big time. Apparently, we had performed for one of his friend's birthday party a while back. He really liked Key's singing but failed to realize who I was. I didn't really care much about it because I'm not exactly a great guitarist. And plus, most people really only liked Key and the other girls and never cared for me or my male friend. Anyway, he asked if we could perform for his birthday party the following Friday. Ordinarily, we would say yes, but our drummer is visiting family and we cannot really play without her. The kid looked annoyed and he walked off. We felt bad, but there were really nothing we could do about it. Most of our songs relay on a drummer. We guessed that was the end. We were wrong. The kid came back with his mother looking furious. And well, the conversation went like this. Excuse me. The mother spoke loudly. Not loud enough for the restaurant to hear, but enough to get our attention. Yeah? I replied back. I wasn't good with people so I might have sounded uncaring by accident. My voice has always been slightly monotone so I might have offended her cause she immediately started scolding me. Why are you so willing to perform for other people but not my son? I'm sorry but we won't be available for Friday. You can request for us on Thursday or Saturday if you would like. How dare you? My son does well in everything. He deserves a little present, no? Just make an exception for him. After all, he's a precious angel. Honestly, it might sound mean, but I didn't really care that much about her son. I'm sorry, but we really can't show up on Friday. Our drummer will be gone and we can't perform without her. Just make a song without needing the drums. It's not so hard. You're just being lazy. Honestly, the lazy comment was whatever. Truth of the matter, I'm naturally lazy, but that wasn't actually the reason. That's hard to do on such a short notice. You're giving us two days. At best, we can just try singing the happy birthday song. And immediately, she started to get more annoyed and frustrated with me, and my friend just watched confused. Yes, she does know English, but she cannot understand the rudeness of this lady. No, 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 no. You will come up with a brand new song for him. She started to stomp her feet on the ground, and at this point, I'm sure the customer is heard. But they just didn't want to get involved. Although I stayed calm enough. We could do that, but to come up with a good song in two days, plus school and our jobs, we'd have to work through the night and put more stress on ourselves. Assuming you want a three-minute song, we would have to charge you $60 for it. $60 for a measly song? That is a high-rate robbery. I'm sorry, ma'am, but you cannot expect students to do this for cheap. Especially with finals rolling just around the corner. You will do it for free because my son has worked incredibly hard this year. 
He has three A's this year. Honestly, that sounds nice. But three A's throughout the entire year wasn't exactly anything special. I'm sorry, but we cannot do it for free. And finally, Key decided to step in and try to resolve this issue herself. I let her since she was better at it than me. I'm sorry, miss, but we only do free performances for specific reasons. A terribly ill child, mentally ill people, people with suicidal thoughts and whatnot. She continued to list off a lot of things, but it was clear to tell the kid was perfectly healthy. She stood quiet for a while and I imagine it's because of Key's natural sweet nature. She's childlike, so she slightly understood why the Pratt was so hell-bent on the performance. And the mom and kid talked for a while. Alright, well, if we can't have you perform, you must be my child's girlfriend. The both of us were taken aback. The woman actually had the audacity to say that. And the kid looked like he was 9. He was 16, about to be 17 soon. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I cannot date your son. This obviously displeased the woman. Why not? He's a smart boy and very kind. You just need to give him a chance. Honestly, you're rather lucky. I tried to hold back my laughter. This was just too priceless. The woman actually thought her son was a catch. I'm sorry, but he's a little too young for me. Plus, I already have a fiancé. Not exactly true, but close. We promised to get married when we were six, so I don't really want to leave him. She proceeded to point towards me and naturally my cheeks turned red from the embarrassment. The thought of marrying her did not embarrass me, but her saying it so calmly did. Plus, I easily get embarrassed. The woman hit her breaking point. She reached over to grab Key's arm, which she succeeded, then proceeded to yank her, trying to make her stand and go with her. You're coming with me. Watch, you'll see my son will be a good boyfriend. The one thing about me is I have something that easily gets me angry. Usually it's okay, but at a certain point I start seeing red and really grow to be aggressive. Usually this only happens when someone tries to harm my friends and family. So naturally I stood up ready to break her arms. And luckily a manager of the restaurant grabbed the lady and demanded she let go of key. She grunted, but eventually she did so. I still wanted to destroy her, but the employee patted my shoulder and encouraged me to calm down. Which I did. I'm 17, but I'm not built to take down an army. Even if I wanted to break her, I probably couldn't. Key stood near me holding her marked arm and it was red from the grabbing. And that's when the racism started. It's not my fault she's being a Chinese witch. For starters, Key is a Japanese. And she has been nothing but calm and kind towards these people. For all we know, she could try pumping us like they did to Pearl Harbor. Second of all, that was a Japanese and no such conflict had occurred between America and Japan for a few years. Why would a 16-year-old girl be a secret weapon to destroy America? The manager called the cops while we waited with an employee and the two devils. Eventually, the police came and arrested the woman and they asked if we wanted to press charges, but Kay said no, just cause she was too kind. Against my better judgment, I went along. Big mistake, but that's a different story. By the way, the mom and the kid weren't the only ones there. They were sitting with a man and a young girl, but they ignored everything and just pretended nothing was happening. Once the lady left, the what I assumed dad bound with his daughter and forced the kid to bow to. All three apologized. The kid did against as well and offered to pay the bill for us. We thanked him and even now, we still keep in touch with the daughter who just turned seven. Sometimes me and the dad hang out at the park and I even told him if he wanted a babysitter, he could have my friend do it for a decent price. He said okay and our relationship grew nicely. He treated us like we were his own kids. But of course we avoid the witch and her entitled brat. Which we later found out the dad and the witch got a divorce which made avoiding her so much easier. Round 2 Get ready ladies and gentlemen's entitled mother returned once again to honor her brat. This time we'll call her Karen instead of just entitled mother. We will call my friend Sue, a different friend than Key, and we will call my manager Stacy. And my co-worker Neko and I will be me. Story time. 
So a few weeks have passed since I've encountered Karen. I've talked to her ex-husband for a while since then. I went to work like normal, I work in a maid cafe though, I'm a dishwasher and obviously, I'm not forced to wear a maid outfit, because I'm a guy. So instead they have me wear the classical butler attire. This will be a crucial detail down the road. So work time. I was washing dishes like normal till I heard shouting coming from the main area. I obviously rushed out and then noticed a co-worker of mine trying to calm down a lady before eventually signaling for me to come over. So I did, and the conversation went kinda like this. Hey, uh, what seems to be the issue? I didn't even finish my sentence just because I noticed who the lady was. And obviously, she remembered who I was as well. Aha! Uh -huh. I know you worked here. I demand to speak with your manager. Honestly, I didn't feel like dealing with her nonsense, so I said okay and went to get my manager. Three minutes later, the two of us came out to meet the lady again. About time. You should always be ready for when a customer asks for you. It should take you less than a minute for you to arrive. After all, we're the ones who pays for your stupid bills. I was already ready to kill her, but the manager just smiled and replied, I'm sorry miss, I won't question your logic, but what's the issue anyways? We haven't even given you a seat yet. Well, I would like you to fire that pedophile. She proceeds to point towards me. I'm sorry miss, but he hasn't done anything that would require me to fire him. He's quite the employee, so we wouldn't want to lose him. He has done many things wrong. Him and his demon of a friend tried seducing my son despite being underage. You little witch. I stopped talking since my manager covered my mouth with her hand. I'm sorry, but I can't picture my employee doing that. In fact, he has told me the story and he had a different side to it. He was clearly lying. Who would you rather believe? And now single mom raising one angel or this rapist? I was ready to blow a fuse. But my manager kept standing between us, using her hand which was still covering my mouse as a blockade. Um, where did this issue occur? The local park. Sadly, there were no cameras. The little witch just lied to the manager. It actually happened in a restaurant and she was the one assaulting us. I see. Okay, hey Sue. Mind calling the restaurant Angel told us about? We will ask them. Sue shouted back from the kitchen then went ahead to call. At this time, Karen looked fearful, but still held her ground. The manager went to speak with the manager from the other restaurant, leaving me, Karen, Sue, and Neko. She spent a few minutes there, I think it was like five. But anyway, Karen took this time to lunge towards me, attempting to strike my arm with her purse, and she would have succeeded, but Sue wrapped a piece of cloth, used for putting on people's lab, and then slammed her arm back forcing Karen to fall backwards and bump her head against the counter. Ah, you freaking witch! I'm going to sue you people! How dare you treat your customer like that! Stacy came running out and we explained the situation, then she called the cops. You jerks are totally going out of business. I will ruin you! Shut up! I don't care what you do to my business, but don't you ever try attacking my employees. Do it again and I will tell the cops to never mind and personally beat you senseless before sending you to jail. The lady immediately shut up. Minutes passed by and the cops finally arrived. We explained to them the situation then she explained her side. Officer, these people assaulted me then threatened me. I'm a mother, you must believe me. Look at this pervert over there. Why would a guy work in a cafe with girls dressed like this if he wasn't planning on assaulting them? Only reason I worked here was because Sue was too embarrassed to do this job alone. So I offered to do it and Stacy allowed me to. The officer tells her, Ma'am, we have to arrest you. It is clear you have been stalking this boy. And this isn't the first time an incident like this has occurred. Arrest me? How dare you? He's the one who tried having his girlfriend seduce my son. Again, he did nothing last time we saw her. Neko says, Officer, we're really sorry for this, but later on, once she's in the car, would you like to see past recordings? This isn't really the first time she caused a scene here. And they eventually cuffed her and started dragging her to the vehicle. She struggled to try and keep herself in the cafe. 
and eventually we made eye contact. I honestly just grinned and whispered, I win round two, with the most smug expression I have ever gotten, which caused her to go into a frenzy. Stacy says that she's sorry and I tell her that it's not her fault. We laughed about it and the customers went back to doing their own thing and she eventually became the meme of the cafe. She did try suing the manager using me being the only boy, me wearing a slave outfit, it was a butler uniform, and a pump on the head from the counter bang. But she lost, eventually forcing herself to get countersuit for $200,000. In other words, instead of ruining the cafe, she greatly helped it. Next story. Letting my ex-husband drown in attorney fees. After five years of marriage and endless false promises, I finally get my personal revenge. My ex-husband, 32, and I, 33, got married in 2017 after one year of long-distance relationship between the US and Germany. We sealed the deal, got married in the US, and he wanted me to live with him in the good old US of A, because he didn't want to learn another language. To make things easier, he moved in with me in Germany for a job. I helped him so we would have time to finalize my plans for emigration. Now my ex didn't even get started to gather all the required documents for himself to be my sponsor. So then done, I had all the documents well sorted out, cancelled all my contracts, sold my belongings, sent large parts of my things to the US, and said goodbye to my lovely home, friends and family. And little did I know my ex-husband did not do a single bit of research or even did his part of my immigration process and I wasn't able to set foot on the plane that would bring me to my new home. Long story short, he left for the US without me and I was just homeless, with a suitcase and two cats. He continued to lead me on with promises to come and get me. Meanwhile, he started an affair and later he got involved with a 21-year-old young lady. I lived with my parents for a few months and to get back on my feet, find a new apartment and a new source of income. Now I never went to German officials to get our marriage recognized in Germany, mostly because I didn't think it was necessary, because we planned to live together in the US. But my laziness should be proven to be useful later. Since he was with his new girlfriend, 21, I broke up the relationship. In the US, we still count as married and focused on myself, regaining my independence and rebuilding my life in my home country. I fell in love with an acquaintance, 31. I've known him for 13 years and we soon found out that we have very much the same goals in life and the very same ideals and wishes for a monogamous life. Meanwhile, I've been in contact with my ex to finally get him to start a divorce in the US. Since the marriage was closed in the US, only a US citizen is able to petition for the divorce at the district court. I did not want my name to be further affiliated with him man. I also didn't see the reason why he should further profit from tax benefits. I made it clear I didn't want this anymore and wanted to move on. And finally he got a process started and forgot one single thing. I am not an American citizen. So everything that applies in the US when it comes to paperwork does not apply to me in Germany. Means? Serving me via email? Nope. Wanting me to sign something electronically? Nope. Not possible. All they would have to do is to send me the notarized signed and translated paperwork via physical mail. But they don't. So I get email after email with please to get me to sign the US divorce papers electronically. With every mail his lawyer sends me, his pay ramps up. Don't get me wrong, I certainly told the lawyer what he has to do in order to get me to sign a legally significant piece of paper, but I guess he doesn't know international laws. So at this point, my ex still sits on all of my belongings, I asked him to give back and since he doesn't do that, I'll keep collecting spam mails from his lawyer. That's my personal revenge for leading me on using my hopeless romantic heart and leaving me alone when things went hard. I do not count as married in Germany, and I'm currently expecting a little baby boy with my partner and we are building a life together without false promises. Edit. Wow, I did not think I'd get much of a response. 
for some I'm stupid and idiot and for some I did get myself into that situation, which is fine to claim, but I never denied accountability. I learned my part. And just because a marriage just gets divorced in the US, because he has to file for it, doesn't mean we haven't been separated for much longer. Was I stupid? Yes, absolutely. Am I wrong for moving on with a new partner at 33? Nope, absolutely not. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.